drugs, baby. You could chill 300 times and have a billion times and all that. But that's all in a lifetime. But it's all in one lifetime, baby. Hello. This is another stimulating episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me? My name is Brian, I play the role of Monster, and I'm your host for today. What? We've been ganging and banging. <laughs> YOLO is a youth TV serial which deals with adolescent reproductive health issues and encourages young people to adopt positive behaviors to help them enjoy the good life. Here on What Does YOLO Mean To Me? We get to meet you, the fans to discuss what YOLO TV series means to you as an individual, the impact it's made on your lives, as well as touch on a few adolescent reproductive health issues, which were highlighted in the previous YOLO TV series. Remember, you can live a good life by exercising and eating a healthy diet. Also, to continue to enjoy a good life in this COVID-19 era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wash your hand with soap under running water. Do not hug or shake hands Use hand sanitizers, avoid touching your mouth, nose and face, and ensure you maintain physical distance of about two meters between you and others when in public. Avoid overcrowded places. Here with me are five individuals. They will introduce themselves and share with us what YOLO means to them. Hello, my name is Collie Selom Presla, and a student of the University of Ghana, Lagon. I love YOLO because it is very interesting and my favorite characters are Drogba and Sewa. Drogba and Sewa are quite entertaining to watch. Hi, my name is Mary Afoleotu. I graduated from the Presbyterian in High School, Usu. I like YOLO because when watching it, it gives you a whole lot of advice, as in you abstaining yourself from sex, and also before having sex, you protecting yourself with a condom. Hi, my name is Richmond Tapon and I completed Laboni Senior High. I like YOLO because it's educative, inspiring, it's fun, and above all, it trains the youth in becoming good adults, yeah. My name is Charles Diakorte. I'm 90 years of age, a student of Ghana Communication Technology University. I like to watch YOLO because of my favorite character, Auntie Enyonam. The role she plays carries out a good message to the general public. YOLO has impacted my life positively because it has helped me to have meaningful friendship. My name is Sani Pujo Seyram. I'm 21 years old, a graduate of Chimu Senior High. Um, the reason why I like YOLO is for two main reasons. One, because of its interesting and exciting characters, and it's a very educative series to learn from. Um, watching it from childhood has shaped my life and my mentality towards various facets of life. My name is Bernard Jesse. I completed Akimo Dancing High School. I am 19 years of age. The reason why I like YOLO is because it's fun to watch and there's more lessons when watching. Today, we are going to talk about gender roles and empowerment. We will discuss some expectations that have been assigned to boys and girls within society. So before we start, let's watch an excerpt from the YOLO TV series. I'll give you directions, okay? So you go to that house and ask of Emily. Mm -hmm. So you have a girlfriend in the area and as for me, you are being so hard on me like you are innocent. Yeah, shut up there. Shut up. She's not my girlfriend. I need you to go to her and take something from her, from her for me, okay? This time that the evil spirits have come out, you want me to go alone? Where don't you go at all times? Tell me, tell me, there are places that you go at all times. Is this part? Why, why? Eh? Don't be doing that thing. Besides, you'll be going with Betty. Okay. She's not going anywhere, really John. She's tired. She's not going anywhere. I just need her to take something from that house send around me. where you I'm actually going for a walk with your dad, so send me. I me, mean, I can't send my mother out. Uh -uh. What do you want and from who? You are up to your tricks again, eh, George? Mommy, I just want her to take something go from there. Go take a shower eh? and read a book. Go on. I mean, she was going to go with Betty. So send Betty alone. It's late and she's tired. Send Betty alone. Now, let's get the conversation started. What are gender roles? Gender roles are the things or behaviors the community or society expects you to do or show because you're a boy or a girl. Gender roles are the behavior and attitude of a person that society expects because of their gender. Gender roles in a society means how we are supposed to act, speak, and conduct ourselves based on our genders or sex. 
So what are some of the examples of roles society imposes on boys and girls? The role society has imposed on me as a girl, I am mindful of the way I speak, the way I dress, and the way I interact with the opposite sex. For instance, I sometimes feel very uncomfortable when I wear sneakers because according to society, it's a man thing. For example, if you're a female, you're supposed to dress feminine and do the household chores. And if you're a man too, you ought to be strong. <laughs> and then be putting down house, keeping money and all that, paying school fees, yeah, so. Usually, they say boys have the freedom to play football, go out with their friends, have fun, whilst Girls are allowed to stay in the kitchen, do all the chores, and then the dirty work, you know. Some of the rules society imposes on boys and girls are the girls' place is in the kitchen and the boys play football. Hey, can you imagine? Girls should cook, girls should stay in the kitchen, girls shouldn't go to school. Me, I don't agree with it. Example with girls. Society thinks girls and girls are supposed to wear what girls are supposed to wear, not what boys are supposed to wear. And also with their voice, ways of talking, and also in the kitchen, girls are supposed to do the washing. Boys are not supposed to do the washing. So that's what I know. How have gender roles impacted on the health or self-image of boys and girls? For example, are you shy to do your house chores in the presence of your opposite sex? No, I'm not shy. Why? Because most women or most girls play the roles of a guy and it has been a normal thing in the society. For example, boys are supposed to act like the greater vessels, the alphas in society and to take part in the strong physical activities such as pounding, fufu or being the head of the family. So one of the ways is that some females are unable to ask for help from the opposite sex because they think they will criticize them and some are shy because they don't know what they might think about them too. I'm not shy in doing my chores in front of the opposite sex because that's my duty and then they are, I'm expected to do that so why should I feel shy? But if, uh, anyways other people feel shy but I don't. I know of a friend who is shy to mingle with guys because she went to a girls school which is very bad. Shy? Why shall I shy? When I can cook, they can also cook. When I can clean, they can also clean. It's free. It's just that society have imposed the mentality that girls should do this, girls should do that. And that's the negative effect, making people shy. But for me, I'm not. Society have this mind that guys are supposed to do the hard work. But we have this saying that what men can do, women can do better. If a boy can push a truck, I can also push a truck. If a boy can do with like the masculine works, I can also do it, but because of the society, I'll be shy to push truck. Boys are generally tagged as strong and more violent. Some even say that a man must not cry. Do you agree or disagree with the assumption? Why? I agree because men are usually seen or tagged to be their hardcore. And then men are able to control their emotions. Unlike women, men are emotionally stronger than women. I disagree because the guy have much responsibilities and has been a burden in getting thinking of providing food for the family and that will make him emotionally feel bad and have so much thoughts in mind because of that men has to be hard and strong but it doesn't mean they are violent i agree to disagree no two heads about it boys are stronger but they aren't violent women cry men can also cry but men have an upper grip of their emotions yes I think boys are stronger and more violent than girls. So the reason I'm saying this is, I said it earlier on that what men can do, women can do better. But example, when maybe um, you have a fight with guys, as a lady, you can't. You can't really beat them. But with the guys, with a guy, he can really do it much more than a lady. So that is why I'm saying guys are much more violent than girls. Strong dear, me, I'm strong. All boys are strong. But they cry dear, before cry, before wash our eyes small, if you don't cry, like, there's nothing. To cry is human. So it's just that we guys, we, we try to portray ourselves as hard guys. So in the outside, we are hard. We are go-getters. But in there, like, yeah, we cry sometimes. Let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about this topic. Hi everyone, my name is Andres Kojobese and I'm 22 years of age and I'm joining the um, conversation from Tema. Some societal roles that imposes on boys and girls are um, boys are meant to be outside playing ball and girls are always inside the house to cook and in some society guys are always the ones to drive like the taxis, the Uber drivers. Um, you barely see any woman driving um, boats or taxis around town because it's 
because they are rare. When it comes to self-image, I don't know why um, some boys and girls have to feel shy over cooking in front of their opposite sex. Because I know of a lot of boys that have become chef right now and they are making a lot of impact in the society. I know a lot of women that drive as Uber drivers and boat drivers and they are passionate about what they do. Our next discussion is on gender empowerment. So before we start, let's watch our next step from the YOLO TV series. You know say, the man come out, go let you make you talk to him. You go feel handle him. No problem. Hey, the day here, then do your body, no problem, no problem. As he come, then you go turn shy girl. Eh? You know say, you pay you to talk to him. See, I've told you that this man, his biggest weakness is fine ladies. The way they like women, you see women pay face so go make red. So if you capitalize on this, you bab. Eh? You feel do? Say, I'll be at all your victim. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one. Oh, That's I've told you not to worry. I can handle him. You know I'm a sales girl, right? So, what's your problem? Eh? You be sales girl. You be sales girl, so you figure say you know everything. Yeah. They there with your Santasi Nicki Minaj premise tees. <laughs> then go flop. Eh? Me? Santasi Nicki Minaj? Go and do that. Oh, relax. What is this? Oh. What do we mean by empowerment? When we talk of empowerment, it's the act or actions by an individual to take an authority in doing something. Empowerment, from my point of view, is a stage in life where an, an individual is strengthened and psyched mentally to take up authoritative roles and be who he or she is or really is. Empowerment is you having the authority to do something and self-esteem in people and communities. Empowerment is a process of becoming stronger and more confident, um, especially in controlling one's life. From my point of view, I think empowerment is equipping someone and then giving the person authority to do something with confidence. Do you think boys and girls, women and men should all be treated equally and given the same opportunities? Why or why not? Yes, I agree with that. In a world where everyone is pursuing gender equality, it's very important that society accepts the new norm whereby girls should be given the same opportunity as boys, no matter where they find themselves at. I think boys, men, girls and women are supposed to be treated the same. So the reason I'm saying this is when we come to act, act, as in visual act, um, guys, have this expression of they can only draw, women can do it. But with me, I offered visual art. I can really, really draw. So maybe when well, maybe there's an opportunity for act something, I can go for it and they'll take me. So that is the reason why I'm saying that girls, women, boys and men are supposed to be treated equally. Yes, because what men can do, women can also do. For example, men play football but women are usually criticized when playing football when we are uh, when women are given the chance they will also explore and then encourage other girls or ladies to also do same yes boys and girls should be treated the same and equally why because when it comes to the game of football women can also take interest in playing the game of football and helps the people around have interest or eyesight in it. I think girls, boys, women and men should be given the same opportunities. When you are and you go on film, I think same opportunities should be given to um, each and everybody to um, outline gender equality. How can we support girls to feel more empowered and to be more confident and stronger in order to reach their full potential? Two of the ways I know in supporting girls is encouraging them and also believe Encouraging them in believing themselves and also example in acting. They might give a role to a guy as in like you playing the role of a junkie. A girl can also play that. A girl can also play that. So these are some of the ways society can help girls to reach their full potential. Girls can be supported to reach their full potential by letting them know they can thrive more and we should encourage them to believe in themselves that they can do beyond measures. One of the ways is organizing forums and conferences to enable them know that what men can do, women can do better, but what men can do, women can't do all of that. So they have specific roles they can play even in the man's shoes. I think we should organize seminars and then have a talk or chat with the women. And then I think such workshops like this should be headed or organized by the men. When a woman is supposed to empower a woman, 
the motivation is not there. Hey, you know, some time ago, eh, I saw some woman show show me the way she was doing the thing. Eh. It used to be a man's job, now it's a woman's job. They can do everything. In order for them to be more empowered, I think men should be the one to lead the feminist movement or um, uh, groups that promote gender and female equality. So if men are leading those groups, then the women will be well empowered. Yes, both boys and girls should be given the same opportunities. For example, in the game of football, lots of girls are not encouraged, which shouldn't be so, because both boys and girls can play and even excel in football, so everybody should be treated the same. How can families, schools and communities ensure that boys and girls grow up to be more aware of equal and acceptable gender practices. Schools, families and communities should encourage girls to be courteous. Example, like dressing decently and neatly, learning how to sit properly in public, and guys opening doors for ladies, helping them with their handbags and all those stuff, you know by giving them the freedom and doing what guys can do so that it won't be difficult for them in the future. Even though I said it earlier on that what men can do, women can do better, families and teachers are to teach girls how to sit appropriately and also how to trim their hairs, how to work well. For example, as a lady, you can't work like a man. You have to work well as a lady that, like, you know, with men, Men can work this way, but as a lady, you can work that. So that's what I know. The answer there would be one answer, public sensitization. Make we educate our pastors, our elders, our chiefs, our queen mothers, them all. Make them teach the girls how to dress and then Queen Elizabeth vibes. Make them teach the boys to shut up properly, do their hair well, present themselves neatly. Whether it be boy or be girl, it no be matter. It should just be yourself. Be proud of who you are. That's what's important. So I think if we do these things, girls and boys will be more aware of acceptable gender practices. Do you think we need gender impartial socialization centers, meaning groups or platforms where boys and girls can participate without discrimination in our communities? Yes, we really do need the social platforms where boys and girls can socialize without any gender-based issues. I think we need gender impartial socialization centers because it will enable both boys and girls get affirmative with each other and um, help them in growing. I think some of the places are like the church, the Kifit clubs, the schools and, and, and um, yeah, the drama clubs and a whole lot, yeah, we have more. Yes, I think we should have socialization centers for both male and females. So what are some of the examples of such socialization centers? Like Keep Fit, Check Activities, Drama, and many more. Examples are the Adolescent Productive Health Clubs established in our secondary schools, the Keep Fit Church programs, youth programs, all those programs established by NGOs and people. Yes, we need them. How can we change the narrative about gender roles and inequality? Schools should teach boys and girls that there is nothing wrong to be a boy and a girl. Men should encourage the women and rather not condemn them. Because in most situations, men look down upon women, which is very bad and causes gender inequality. The narrative about gender role and inequality can be changed by making both parties know that they can all do everything they set their minds at. And what a man can do, definitely a woman can do also. I think we can change the gender narrative by encouraging feminism. The narrative about the gender rules are already changing with this new movement of feminism and so on. But this can still, there's more work needed to be done. The boys should be well empowered, not just empowering the girls, but empowering the boys as well. You'd also have to take, let give men the opportunity to lead feminism groups or female-based empowerment groups. Thereby, once the boys are empowered, the cause of the girls being empowered will be a cause nice work. Let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about this topic. Hi everyone, my name is Deborah Belinda, a student of NAPTI and I am connecting from Ashoman Estate. I totally agree that boys, girls, women, men should all be given the same opportunity um, because each and every person has a potential within them. So if we are all given the same opportunity to bring out what we have inside us, I believe we are going to help build our nation. 
um, for example i know of other ladies who like to drive buses the ubers do other things that we all know is supposed to be done by men you know and i know of other guys or men who want to be chef so i believe if we encourage um, each and every one of us we can start from early stage and then it will be big if we want to eliminate gender inequality then i believe we should start from our homes because charity begins at home so if our parents don't give specific tax to um guys and other tax to ladies and then they they balance everything for us all to do i believe it's going to help and then when we come to our various schools as well during physical education both boys and girls should be given the same opportunity to play the ampere to play the football you know it's it's all start from there do you think society favors girls more than boys or vice versa when it comes to access to information and services on sexual and reproductive health issues why or why not add your voice to the discussion by sending your comments via video or text to our social media platforms. Visit or download the GHS YMK app on the Google Play Store or Apple Store for more information and talk to or chat with our counselor online. You may also visit the nearest GHS Adolescent Health Corner or locate a facility through the GHS YMK app. Don't forget, access to sexual reproductive health information and services is a right for all. Access to justice is a right for all girls, boys, men and women girls can boys can let's empower the girls to reach their full potential if given the same opportunities and support both boys and girls can reach their full potential thank you for joining us for this season of what does yolo mean to me i hope you had fun and have picked up enough information to help you live the good life also to continue to enjoy a good life in this covid 19 era we have to be cautious to stay safe always wash your hand with soap under running water. Do not hug or shake hands. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your mouth, nose and face and ensure you maintain physical distance of about two meters between you and others when in public. Avoid overcrowded places. This special discussion of YOLO dubbed What Does YOLO Mean To Me was designed to keep the discussions going on all that we are learning from watching the YOLO TV series. My name is Queen Stanefi, popularly known as Emmy. My name is Nana Manfofua and I play the role of Ariana. My name is Kevin Boone and I play the role of Mark Anthony in YOLO. My name is Jason Edward, I play the role of Psycho. My name is Lolali Kwashiga, I play the role of Anne. My name is Ivan Edumwa, I play the role of Abrantia. My name is Aaron Adachi, I play the character Cyril in YOLO, aka the Mama's Boy. I am Akosia Asiedwa and I play the role of Tilly in YOLO TV series. My name is Chief and I play the role of George. My name is William Odate Lamte, I play the role of Flex. Zamzain. My name is Christabelle Mwabeng. I play the role of Lydia. My name is Etty Betty and I play the role Yasmin in the YOLO TV series. My name is Dilav Agas. I play the role of Odenchen. My name is Claudia and I play the role of Antoinette. My name is Gali. I play Arab. Remember to live a good life. Good life. Live it well. Good life, it's an everyday thing. YOLO, you only live once. <laughs>